Okay, you guys, what I got here is a Daisy 880, and I've done a lot of videos like this before. <clears throat> I've been shooting the Daisy 880 now, scoped and unscoped, uh, since 1983, and I found out a lot of things about the Daisy 880. And I'm the kind of person that likes uh, lower cost air guns and older air guns because of the fact that it gives me a challenge to find out what can make it more accurate. And better to shoot even though there's guys out there that uh, love PCPs that's fine uh, but I'm the kind of guy I like uh, taking on challenges making air guns work better um, than what the manufacturer say they do for instance some manufacturers and even Pyramid Air might give certain air rifles an accuracy rating but uh, you'll find out that when you try different pellets and different procedures you can actually get more accuracy out of the rifle than you thought and it's important for any air rifle to get a good break-in period and practice good maintenance and taking care of your uh, rifle so what I want to do is I want to show you uh, what I did here did a quick uh, shot test for you guys just to give you an example these are Crossman pellets except for one of them is the Beeman uh, hollow point and I wanted to show you uh, some groupings here that I did and to start off I'm just going to read what my chart says here to Daisy 880 no, B no BBs were used in this rifle so the rifling is okay because I've never used BBs through this particular model I have another one that I shoot BBs in and it was done bench rest 15 yards 10 shots for each group and we're uh, pumping it up four times um, a lot of people ask why 10 shots uh, the reason for 10 shots is because simply uh, fouling time which means when you when you clean a barrel the first few shots that go through the barrel the pellets getting used to the barrel so you might have some wild flyers and stuff like that until the pellet gets seated in the lands and the grooves so it feels home there you know what I mean so you have to fire quite a few pellets uh, to get the barrel conditioned you know so that's ready to be more accurate but what we got here is I'll read off the pellets here it's 7.4 grain this is a crossman pointed pellet you can see from here to here 80 percent of the shots out of the 10 shot group is one and a half inches uh, number two is the 10.5 grain crossman heavy we got a one inch group 80% of the shots fit within that one inch. And uh, let's see, 7.9 grain, this is a Crossman hollow point. Uh, this one, it's uh, 750 for the grouping, and that was 70% of the shots. And then over here, we got a nice pellet that's very inexpensive, actually, under a penny once you order several boxes of it. Uh, the 7.2 grain beam and hollow point here. This pellet's been around for quite a long time. 80% um, we got uh, a group of half inch right here, 0 0.500. And this procedure that I did before I started is I oiled the pad and cleared it out, which mean, what I mean by that is I oil it and then I dry fire it several times and then I clean the barrel. Cleaning before each pellet, uh, that means that whenever you do a new pellet, you want to clean the barrel and start off fresh again. Equal time with each pump. That's when you're pumping the rifle, at, you're pumping it with the same cadence. You're not pumping it really fast, but you're pumping it a little slower to give the air time to rush in there so that you have equal amounts of pressure for each pump. If you pump the Daisy 80 too fast, what you're doing is you're not allowing the air enough time to get down in there. So what will happen is your your shots are going to be a little different because of the fact that you don't have equal pressure. So after doing all this, uh, for many years, Crossman pellets and Gamma pellets, to me, have not been the most accurate pellets because of uh, quality control and seams and weight issues. But they're still good for some things. Uh, for example, since about 1983, since I've been shooting these, I evaluated what I thought was 
a decent uh, pellet for the DZ880. At 25 yards, if you do a five shot group at one inch, it's excellent. 1.5 inches is good. Two inches and two, in two inches or higher, that's the time when you want to switch pellets and find out if you got a better pellet. So that's my evaluation for the DZ880. Now, if you get half inch for five shots, that's really lucky, but normally you're going to get one inch at 25 yards for being pretty much one of its one of its best all-time averages if you got a really good pellet for five shots. Now, 10 shot group is going to be different. You got more pellets, you got more chances to have flyers, stuff like that. So after getting all this data down here, there's a couple other things you guys need to know too. Uh, for example, here's the velocities right here. I don't know if you can see that. 7.2 grain, which is the beam and hollow point here. And then the 10.5 grain, that's the Crossman Heavy. Here's the velocity at four pumps. Here's the velocity at 10. And right here is its uh, time to 25 yards and its time to 100 yards. If you notice, the lighter pellet gets to 25 yards a lot quicker in tenths of a second, that's what this is here, than the heavier one. But what's true with most pellets is generally heavier pellets that have a better ballistic coefficient usually end up getting at the target quicker at some time. And in this case, at 100 yards, the 10.5 grain pellet is getting there in six tenths of a second and the lighter pellets getting there at seven tenths of a second. So that just goes to prove that yes, light pellets are fast, but they're not fast throughout the whole trajectory. Uh, the heavier pellets catch up. You can see right here that this one caught up to the lighter pellet. And also the energy, because of the ballistic coefficient of the 10.5, at about 55 yards it'll have five foot-pounds of energy, whereas the 7.2 will have half that energy. So if you're hunting squirrels or whatever, you get an idea of what your energy is going to be for that. So after predicting, or after looking at these groups here, we can kind of predict what kind of groupings we're going to get if all the variables are right. You know, if there's no wind or anything like that at various distances. So what you see here is 30 yards. So for instance, the first pellet which was the Crossman pointed 7.4 grain, we can see that if we put it out to 30 yards, it's only going to be good for probably a pop can with that 10 shot group. So you can still, like I'm saying with Crossman pellets, you can sh still shoot cans out to 25, 30 yards and even further, but you're not going to get all 10 of them at longer distances. You might get a lucky shot here and there, but I believe in a 10 shot group though to verify accuracy for the most part. Um, pellet number two, two inch groups at 30 yards. That would be the Crossman Heavy. So at 30 yards, two inches, uh, you could probably get in some good hunting and be somewhat accurate at hunting at 30 yards, given you know if the, all these factors are right here. Um, number three, one and a half inches, that would be the Crossman hollow point here, which did a little bit better. And this is a favorite for most Crossman guys, um, including myself. If I was going to choose Crossman pellets, this one here is generally doing better than most of them. That's why they sell so much of them. Um, but you look here, number three, uh, we can expect one and a half inch groups at uh, 30 yards. And then if we look at number four, with this right here, with this uh, half inch group at 15 yards, at 30, we think that we can get one inch groups at 30 yards with five shots or 10 shots. So that's just kind of speculation, but generally speaking, if conditions are all right, if you shoot indoors, say like at 15 yards and you get a one inch group, generally speaking, um, 30 yards, you get a two inch group by the time it gets out to 30 yards. So it doubles. As the distance doubles, uh, the group doubles with it. 
So anyway, here's the groups here, and you can tell that this cheap one penny pellet here, or even under a cent per shot, does very good. The 7.2 grain hollow point. And then once again, here's the time to target, which which shows that uh, speed is is not everything. Yeah, yeah, light pellets are fast, but are they fast throughout the whole journey? No, they're fast at 25 yards, but once you push them out further, they slow down. So it's like the rabbit and the hare, or rabbit and the turtle story, or whatever. Um. So here's the. So here's the Beeman uh, hollow points. These were called silver bears back in the day. About 7.1, 7.2 grain. It's kind of an all-purpose pellet. It's a wide cutter. It's kind of pointed. It's got a little hollow point cup on it. So it's kind of like a, a do-all type pellet. And they're really good. And they're lightweight and they're cheap. So that's why I like them. And then let me show you the Crossman Heavy. 10.5 green here. Let's see if I can get one. Get a couple in my hand maybe and show you. There you go. Take my fingerprints and find out who I am. No, just kidding. So there they are. 10.5 green. Might be a little blurry. There they are. And because they're long and heavy, they do got a little more stability at longer ranges, too. So that's something to consider. But after um, several decades of shooting something, you always learn something new. And I've learned a lot of things new, but one thing that's true is any anytime it comes to accuracy, just shooting three shots isn't proving nothing, really. You Really, what you have to do... With every air rifle, what I suggest doing, I know it sounds kind of crazy and expensive, what I would do with every air rifle is uh, shoot all the, all the pellets in the tin before you start making uh, judgments on the accuracy of a pellet. Because what we could do is we could take this test all over again. We could have different results, mainly for Crossman because the batches are so different. You'll get one batch that's good, and another batch that's kind of crummy so you have to do a lot of shooting um, with pellets uh, five sets of you know ten sets of five or, or, or a few sets of ten and uh, just keep doing it and keep track of your sheets when you're done shooting keep track of your sheets because what you can do is with something like this now if I keep doing uh, the seven point uh, 7.4 grain let's say that I do several more sets of 10 then what I could do is I could I could divide and find out what the average group size is for the 7.4 and that's how over the decades I know what the accuracy of this rifle is because I've I've been shooting these pellets for so long that I'm able to evaluate what's good and what's bad so on my judgment uh, for having decades of experience on the DZ 880 and shooting it like crazy almost all the time. If you can do a five shot group right here, let me let me show you here. If you can do a five shot group at 25 yards and you're one inch for your five shots, that is really good. If you can do a one and a half inch group, that's that's okay too. If you start getting two inches, that's when you're borderline. That's when you need to think about switching pellets because um, there are some pellets that work good in this rifle and some don't. And uh, one of the reasons why is because the Daisy 880, um, it's a great rifle. The only problem with it is the barrel needs to be rifled a little bit better. Um, it's got what they call the shallow land and groove style rifling, which is pretty much just a quick rifling just to get it off the floor and so it can be sold for a low price. But if this Daisy 880, if they put in a really, really good rifled barrel, and even if they asked for more money, it would be a very, very accurate air rifle. But the problem with the barrel is a lot of pellets that fit inside this barrel 
might be kind of undersized. So when they go inside the barrel, uh, the lands and the grooves aren't digging into the pellet to make it spin like it should. And with the twist rate in this rifle, there should be no problem uh, getting accuracy as long as you have deeper lands and grooves and uh, the bore being sufficient so that it can grab that pellet. And one of the reasons why the Daisy Field right here uh, comes out to be one of the worst Crossman pellets is because of the simple fact that the head of the pellet is sometimes undersized so it's not grabbing the lands and the grooves like the heavier thicker pellets are. So some pellets are wide and at the head and some are narrow and you can tell if you compared like a uh, if you compared a long heavy round nose 10.5 Crossman with a field pellet, I'll show you here what they look like. You can tell. You can tell the difference right there if you look at the head of the pointed pellet there. Now typically what happens with that is if you check it out on a on a like a used barrel, it doesn't fit that tight. Whereas the other one next to it, the 10.5, fits really tight. That's because the head, the front of the pellet, and the skirt, which is the back of the pellet, grab that rifling. Whereas the other one, this field pellet, this crossman here, what happens with this is, yes, the skirt kind of grabs a little bit, but the, the, the front of the pellet doesn't really dig into lands and grooves enough to get that twist. So essentially what you're doing with the Daisy 880 on some pellets is you're shooting a smooth bore because the pellet isn't getting spin because it doesn't have that rifling to spin it. So, so that's one of the things you guys have to understand about how rifling works. It's not that the air rifle's bad, it's, it's the fact that it needs a better barrel. And some guys were saying, well, um, free float it. Oh, it's so much better, it's gonna be more accurate if you free float it. Well, that's not true because back in 1982 or 83, I actually had one that I free floated which means I took off this uh, shroud here and I started shooting it just with the barrel. And yeah, uh, temporarily, yeah, you, you won't have any problems, but there's one problem with it that, that you guys need to know is that the, bar the barrel is just too thin and it's too small. It doesn't have any thickness around it. So every time you pump the rifle, that barrel's, that barrel's going like this. It's vibrating. And every time it vibrates, it gets a little more loose right here when it's free floated. Now, if it was free-floated where it had a thicker barrel, that's fine. But the problem is you can't just free-float it just with the barrel and expect it to be accurate and or better accuracy for, for a long period of time. That's not true. It gets worse, actually. The accuracy gets worse free-floating it. So if you're going to free-float it, you got to do it the right way. And even if you did free-float it, like I did back then, I didn't really notice a whole lot of gain really and accuracy. As a matter of fact, sometimes I thought it was more accurate just the way it is now. So if you're going to prove something, you need lots of evidence. You can't just fire three shots and say, oh, the free floated works better. No, it, it doesn't work like that. You got to fire hundreds and hundreds of shots. And even if you did, that barrel is going to be wobbling around. And at some point, it's not going to be stable like it was, and it's going to start getting slack in it, and then it's going to be inaccurate. So forget the free float concept with the DC-880. Just keep it as it is. Some guys talk about vibration in the barrel. Now that's true. If you take apart the DC-880 right here, if it isn't tight in here where the barrel fits, it can, it can move around a little bit. You want to make sure that there's no play and you can tell if there's play is when, you're, when you start pumping it and you hear vibration right here where the barrel's going back and forth, that's not good. That's going to make it inaccurate. This one here is nice and tight. It's fit good. Uh, there's no play, whereas some other Daisy 880s, when you pick them up, the older ones, and you pump them, you can hear the noise in there. That means that that barrel, somebody took apart the front notch here, and when they put it back on, they spread open the, the metal around here so much that what it did is it allowed play for the barrel to move back and forth. So if you're going to take this apart, you got to know what you're doing. Uh, you want to make sure um, 
when you take this apart and put it back that you're not loosening up tolerances in there. You want to make sure that it goes back nice and tight so it's not loose. So yeah, there's a lot of different things I can talk to you about the DZ880. Like for instance, when you're loading pellets, um, single shot, um, you don't want to load pellets fast. Because what happens is if you drop a pellet in there and throw that bolt forward real quick, what you're doing is you're chipping the side of the pellet. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to chip the side of the pellet. You want to make sure that you angle the rifle this way so it fits real nice inside there. And then gently push the bolt forward. You don't want to slam it forward real hard because what you're doing is you're chipping the side of the pellet. And that's going to cause accuracy problems. Uh, that you didn't even realize. So that's one accuracy tip. The other accuracy tip is when you're pumping, you want to make sure you pump uh, with the same cadence. So, so if you're going to pump at this speed, which is the best, you want to keep that same cadence. You don't want to just take that pump and go like this like some people. Start clapping that thing. It's not going to do any good because you're not allowing the air to get inside the chamber. Natural air pressure is 14.5 foot or 14.5 pounds, I think, natural air pressure or something like that, depending on what your altitude is. What that means is that there's pressure that wants to get in here once you open this up and the valves open. But if you slam it too quickly, you're not allowing the air to fill up in here. So pumping it fast, what I'm saying is when you pump it up fast, what you're doing is you're not getting an equal amount of air pressure in here. And when you have unequal amounts of air pressure, every shot is going to be affected by that. So let's say if you had 650 feet per second for one pellet and you had 600 for the other, well, that's a big difference. So, you know, 50 feet per second, that's a big difference. At, you know, at 50 yards or, or even 25 yards, you're going to notice one of the pellets is going to be high and one's going to be low. And that's because you're not pumping it the right way. You want to pump it and leave it open for a while so that the air can rush in. Now this is also taught, even before my day, uh, the Canadian cadets uh, that used air rifles in their gymnasium high schools. Um, they, they said that too, even before I was into air guns. They said, when you open up that pump, you want to allow the air to rush in. And then you close it, but you don't want to do it too fast. So if you look online, you, 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 can, you can look up some of them uh, shooting courses that were done in gymnasiums called the Canadian Cadets or something like that. And that was way back. Um, and uh, a lot of them marksmanship programs that were taught, they really knew what they were doing. They had good instructors and they also believed in prepping your air rifle uh, five sets of five before you even start a match. So five sets of five would be, I've got 10 shots here, but five sets of five just to get it ready and it properly fouled, like I was saying, because some air rifles require pellets run through it before they become more accurate. Whereas others are just accurate right away. Uh, there are some rifles, believe it or not, that shoot better once they got crud in them. So, and the DZ-880, because it's got shallow lands and grooves, uh, this may be true, uh, that you that you might be able to get accuracy out of this just by running a bunch through, and I found that to be true on especially the RWS um, Super Mag pellets, which are 9.3 grains, very heavy pellets, but I found that they group about an inch at 25 yards consistently, whereas other pellets I have quite a few flyers. So... You might want to look up that pellet and try it. Now, every air gun is different. Every barrel is different, by the way. A lot of people say, oh, you need to shoot this pellet in your DZ-880. But the thing you have to understand is that every pellet, I mean, every barrel is different in rifling, kind of like your fingerprints on your hand. Uh, everybody has different fingerprints. Well, the rifling's the same. It's a little bit cut different with each rifle. So you're going to get different results with my rifle than you would some other one. And the reason I know this is because I've had 10 or 20 DZ 880s in my life. And I've actually seen how that one pellet will work good in one of them and one pellet will work good in another. So that just goes to show that rifling 
and every gun is different. So you have to give it a steady diet of different pellets, find out which one works the best for what distance, find out which ones you're using for hunting, find out which ones work best for just casual plinking, find out which ones work just for accuracy if you just want to test your accuracy, stuff like that. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you guys have any questions about the DZ880, let me know. Uh, as far as mods, there are some guys that mod DZ 880s in different ways, but uh, no matter how much you mod it, uh, you have to have a good barrel, and that's what I'm hoping DZ will do. I'm hoping that they'll maybe get a, give it a better uh, rifled barrel, and then uh, these are going to sell really quick, especially if they're doing under half inch at 15 yards. That would be amazing because if you do a quarter inch, at 15 yards, you're basically you're keeping up with PCPs, pre-charged pneumatic air rifles. So with some of the accuracy that they get, so you have to admit, out of a plastic gun, getting half-inch groups at 15 yards and one-inch groups at 25 yards isn't really too bad, you know. Especially if you drop this thing or something happens to it, you can just go pick up another one for 40, 50 dollars. So you can have your family use it and friends and you don't have to worry about bumping your your woodwork up or anything like that. And it's America's uh, you know favorite air rifle and it pumps easy so you can't go wrong with the DZ-880. I think everybody should have one and I think everybody should shoot one. Uh, but anyway, thanks a lot guys for watching. I hope this was a quality video. I don't prepare for these videos much. Just pretty much cold turkey, so so I haven't had time to like look at a script or something like some people do and make it real professional. I don't really care about professionalism. I just want to make sure that I'm accurate with my details about this rifle and give you my opinion about this air rifle. I think um, I think they should start clubs with this air rifle. I think it would be a fine uh, club air rifle to give to thousands of kids that are starting shooting and teach them on this uh, DZ-880 because it's not it's not that expensive which means everybody can afford one or if somebody can't afford one in a club or something you could uh, buy one or sponsor somebody and just buy it for them whereas PCP you know it's kind of getting to be almost like a fancy exotic club now where everybody's got to have a three thousand dollar air gun you know it's getting kind of Sickening to think that uh, you can't do field target unless you have something that's thousands of dollars. But I say go against the grain. Have your field target day with a DZ-880. Who cares that it does one inch at 25 yards and two inches at 50? Who cares about that? Just go ahead and do it anyway. You don't have to have fancy air guns to participate and have fun in the sport. You can just go out there and do it yourself. That's what I do. So... No matter how accurate these air rifles are, you can start your own little club or you can get people excited about it. Everybody go get the same DAISY 880 like this. Even if you're just putting on a 4x32 scope, if you bought three or four of them, you could challenge each other and have fun uh, with field target shooting. So you can buy them targets uh, that reset with the string and stuff like that. You can go out and have everybody challenge each other. So it'd be really fun, and it's not going to cost you ten, twenty thousand dollars for all these air rifles. Uh, my opinion, rather than getting a fancy PCP rifle, I, I would rather go out and buy a good seventeen HMR, which I do have a couple of seventeen HMR rifles, or a deer rifle or something like that. I, I don't believe in spending thousands of dollars on an air rifle, especially when you got to drag around all them tanks and stuff like that. You know, you got to have a high air pressure tank and then you got to have these seals and then if a seal goes out you know there's a lot not much support uh, with PCP air rifles out there that I know of and I know a lot of people that have told me that that once the company sells you something yeah for a few years they'll support you but then after a while you got that nice air rifle you got no way to get seals you got no way to get parts so that's one of the drawbacks you have to realize is 
you'll end up having some air rifle that doesn't work and you can't get any parts for it. But anyway, that's why it's nice to have some of these shooters that you can use. Um, if you do have a fancy PCP or a rifle, you can shoot this for fun and then use your fancy rifle just for yourself. You can let everybody else shoot this thing here since it's less expensive. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, you guys. Appreciate it.